Not many pilots dare to fly to Antarctica, especially between mid-February and the end of October due to extreme weather conditions. Remember, the seasons are reversed in the southern hemisphere. We're talking about heavy winds, blowing snow, and temperatures as low as minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. You know it's cold when you have to dress like this. But on October 16, 1999, the crew of an LC-130 cargo plane risked their lives and landed in the South Pole. The purpose of the mission was to rescue an American who was stuck in the South Pole for months dealing with cancer. Jerry Nielsen was the one and only physician on site at Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station, which is the United States Scientific Research Station at the South Pole of the Earth. In June of 1999, Nielsen self-diagnosed herself with breast cancer and was in dire need of medical attention. But the problem was that this station was completely shut off from the rest of the world during the Antarctic winter. Given that she had to be airlifted back to the United States as soon as possible for medical treatments, a team was put together to rescue her. Once the weather conditions were barely safe enough to fly there, a rescue team embarked on an LC-130 Hercules. After landing in the South Pole, the total turnaround time was less than 25 minutes. Given the extremely low temperatures, the time on the ground had to be minimized and even the airplane engines were left running after landing to reduce the chance of mechanical parts freezing up. The heroic rescue mission was carried out several weeks ahead of time by the 109th Airlift Wing in order to bring Dr. Nielsen home as soon as possible. Nielsen returned home, was treated and went on to become a motivational speaker. She lost her life to cancer in 2009. The 109th Airlift Wing who rescued Dr. Nielsen has the primary mission of providing airlift support in Antarctic and Arctic operations. But in the absence of a proper runway, it's close to impossible to safely land and take off an LC-130 with 80,000 pounds of cargo. Which is why, before the pilots can put that plane down, a team of 109th engineers has to first go in and build a snow runway called a skiway for the aircraft to land on. The skiway ensures that there are no holes, cracks or other surprises for the crew. The first step to build a skiway is to study the satellite imagery and determine the best place in the designated area. Next, twin otter aircraft equipped with skis are used to fly the crew on site. Twin otters are much smaller aircraft which can safely land on snow and ice. The otters bring in the people and equipment needed to immediately build a base camp which has life-sustaining shelters including heaters and water purification systems. The final step is building the skiway. A reconnaissance team evaluates the ground to ensure suitability before snowmobiles and groomers are used to make the runway. By now it should be clear that this runway is called a skiway because the LC-130 puts on skis and those are some big boy skis. You know what they say about planes with big skis? I'm actually curious if landing on a skiway is smoother than landing on a regular runway. It looks smoother, but leave us a comment if you know. To be fair, it is possible to reliably take off and land a fully loaded cargo plane on deep snow just on wheels, without the use of skis. That involves compacting the snow with heavy rollers weighing up to 160,000 pounds, creating a denser, higher strength snow foundation which is 32 inches deep. This was in fact done in Phoenix Airfield in Antarctica, but the overall process took 16 continuous months to complete and the compacted deep snow airfield could only withstand 60 wheeled flights per year. Of course, skis are not exclusive to fixed-wing aircraft, as seen on this US Coast Guard HH-65 Dolphin helicopter. But putting skis on airplanes and flying to hostile conditions of the North Pole goes back to May of 1952, when three men became the first Americans to ever set foot on the exact geographic North Pole. Pilots William P. Benedict, Joseph O. Fletcher and scientist Albert P. Crary flew a C-47 aircraft which was modified to have both wheels and skis. There was no one to build a skiway, so landing must have been interesting. They were however not the first humans in recorded history to set foot on the exact geographic North Pole. Four years earlier, Soviets had already landed three aircraft there in April of 1948. Now, setting foot on the exact geographic North Pole sounds pretty cool, right? But just remember, once you're there, no matter where you go, everything goes south.